review packet, um, the quiz that run off, we're all set to go. I mean, remember, this is actually not a quiz. This is a chapter test. So kind of important that we understand what's going on here and are ready for this tomorrow. So you can close your computers up now. We don't need those anymore. So let's put our tech put away. That includes our phones and stuff like that, too. And follow along as we go. Uh, number one, when we're given just numerical uh, input like this, we can solve this a couple different ways. But it helps explain what's going on here. I've got two angles of a triangle. I need to find this exterior angle. Now, I know the angles of a triangle add up to what? 180. So I could say 15 plus 35 plus this angle here, I'll call it N right now, is 180, so that's 50 plus n equals 180, so that inside angle is 130. And then use the fact these are a linear pair to say, okay, 130 plus what equals 180? This has to be 50. But as you can see from that, what we really want to get after is the idea that the, in, the exterior angle here is the sum of these two angles. Because if we don't have it strictly numerically like that, if we have an algebra expression or two in there, we probably can't set it up like that where you can solve for the inside one first and then use that to solve for the exterior. We have to use the relationship that the exterior is the sum of the interiors. We learned that first half of the chapter. We haven't used that much lately. But that's a pretty important concept. In problem two, it looks like we're doing the same thing, but it's actually a little different. Well, we can still use the same idea. Now, I'm given that this angle is 57, so finding y is pretty easy because what do we call this pair between 57 and y again? Linear pair, and what do we know about linear pairs? They add up to 180. So y has to be, very simply, 180 minus 57, which is 130 minus 7, which is 130, 123. Okay. Now, once I know that, now I could use the exterior angle theorem if I wanted to. I could say that the sum of these two equals 123. But I'm going to show you why this works so well, because if I did it the other way and add the 57 in here, I'd add the 57 over here, too. And I get this equals 180. The three interiors equal 180. See, it's the same equation. But we can shortcut it a little bit by not, do, by not adding that in there. So it makes my equation a little more accessible. 5x plus 13 is 123. So 5x equals 110, so x is 22. So setting these up, not so bad. Everybody okay with how that one's set up? Next one's tricky. Let's look at it. I've got 5x minus 14, 9x plus 16, and a right angle. Now, I can't do an interior sum here, can I? Because I only know the 90 and the 5x minus 14. I don't know this. But what do I know? An exterior is the sum of these two angles. Oh, so 90 plus 5x minus 14 equals... 9x plus 16. The exterior is the sum of the remote interior angles. The interior is add up to 180. But I don't this 9x minus or 9x plus 16 is not an interior; it's an exterior. And once I got that set up, then it's 90 minus 14 is what? 80 minus 476 plus 5x equals 9x plus 16. And so I could subtract 5x from each side and subtract 16 from each side. 
I get 4x equals 60, so x is 15. But again, we have to know how to set that up. That's the important part. The, inter the exterior is the sum of the remote interiors. That's from first half of the chapter. Okay. Everybody get how to do those now. After I explained it. Okay. It's amazing how that works. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. All right. Classifying triangles. All right. Seriously. This should be child's play. Okay. We have two sides the same. We have a right angle down here. Hmm. Let's see. What kind of triangle is this? Isosceles. Isosceles right triangle. That's simple. It's not scalene. It's not equilateral. It's not equiangular. It's not acute. It's not obtuse. It's isosceles and right. How about the next one? All three sides are the same. Okay. So... Give me a name for this triangle. Yeah. Equilateral. And acute. And this is our special one, isn't it? It has four names. What's the next one? Equa. Yeah, I can't remember the Q today. Equiangular, and what's the really special one? It is also what? Isosceles. Why is it isosceles? But isosceles means what? No, it means at least two sides. Congruent. Now, if I were to put this on the test and you got all four names, I'd probably give you a little extra credit. Okay, so say we get like two out of the four. As long as you got one for sides and one for angles, I'd probably be okay. All right. I'm going to forget like 24 hours from now. Really? Yeah. You have short-term memory? Well, then you should be okay. Like 12 hours. You have short-term memory loss? Are you like Dory? Is your name Dory? <laughs> have you found your parents? No. Okay. Referencing the movie Finding Dory. Yes, there we go. All right. If you haven't seen it yet, go see it. Very cute. Very cute. It's out on DVD now. All right. Uh, how about this one? Now, this this next six set of six problems may seem ridiculously simple, but you do have to pay very, very close attention to what the questions say. So number six says this. Now, I can tell you right now, if I were to put this on the test without any warm-up or any review, most people would say eight. Yeah. Okay? Because the length of LA is eight centimeters. I mean, logical. But what is it really saying? It's saying segment LA is congruent to I segment IG. Seven says angle A is congruent to angle G. Okay, I don't want 47 here. I for 47 degrees here. I don't want eight centimeters here. It wants the actual part it's congruent to. Now number eight says GI equals. Oh, so now we're looking for the measure of a segment. What's the measure of a GI? 
eight centimeters, right? Because it corresponds uh, to LA. And the measure of angle L, oh dear, we don't have anything angle L corresponds to that we know the measure of, do we? But we know the other two angles in the triangle. Well, one of them is 47, and angle X is 94. So 180 minus 94 is 86. Minus 47 is 46, 39 degrees left. So L is 39 degrees. Okay, so 180 minus 47 minus 94. What's the measure of angle G? 47 degrees. How about triangle WIG? Okay, and again, WIG would be corresponding to XLA. Got to be in the correct corresponding order. Now I've gone through the first problem, of the first page of the test, 11 problems. How many proofs have we done? Zero. Zero. None. I can't count those. You wouldn't remember because we didn't so recently have any short-term memory loss. You did? I didn't know we talked about that. We didn't. I'm lying. But I'm not. But I'm lying about lying. Everything I say is a lie. Think about that statement. Think about that. Okay. Uh, so if everything I say is a lie, and that's a lie, then I'm telling the truth. I mean, everything I say isn't a lie, which means that's a, that's a lie, which means the truth. See, logic. No. Okay. 12, 13, and 14. Pictures given. It says, read the instructions. What does it say? It says, state if the two triangles are congruent. If they are, state how you know. In other words, which shortcut? What are my shortcuts? Side angle, side is one of them. Angle, side angle, I heard someone say. Side, side angle is not side, side. Angle, angle, side. Okay. There's no side side angle or angle side side or angle 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 for that measure. There's none of them. So 12, which one do I have, if any? You no, know, 12 is angle side side, isn't it? But what's special about it? It's a right angle, which means we have HL. Okay. 13. Now it's not given, but we can assume what? Vertical angle, so what do I got going on there? Side angle, side, and 14, what do we have? We have angle, side, angle, because we have a shared side, the reflexive side there, right? So all you have to do is write down the shortcut you need. Nothing else. Yes. Absolutely. Have we really done any proofs yet? No. Ready through number 14. Number 15. What additional part do we need to use side angle side in this picture? So I'm going to let you complete this one of two ways. You could name it or you could clearly mark it on the picture. What would we need for side angle side? VW is congruent to ZY. So I could do it that way, or I could say VW congruent to ZY. Either is considered acceptable because, as long as it's clearly marked. If you do it by marking and you also mark other parts, then it will be wrong. You have to just mark the part you need, which here was pretty clear. On this next one, it's a little trickier, though. It did say we have to use angle, angle side. Now, what's marked on there right now is a side. But the picture also gives us something else. What is the picture giving us? The vertical angles. Now, so I don't need, so these are, kind of, these are implied. So what do I really need to know? Okay, so angle T 
would have to be congruent to which one? E to be angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side in that order. If you did V, this side, this one would be angle, angle, side, angle. If we did V here, we don't want angle, side, angle. We want angle, angle, side. Whoops. I guess we want to do that one. I want to go back. There we go. I want to get rid of those dots. All right. So you get how to do those. And you could write it in letters or you can mark it clearly on the test. Either way. Have we done any proofs yet? No. No, we're 16 problems in this test. We still haven't done a proof. Find the value of X. This is, these next two problems employ the base angle theorem of isosceles triangles. So I know if I have two sides in a triangle, I have two angles, that are two sides in a triangle, two sides congruent in a triangle, I have two angles that also have to be congruent and they are opposite of those sides. Here we're indicating these two angles are congruent, so, okay, so what must be true for us to solve for X? What do we have to do? Do I use the 20 at all? No. Why is it there? Yeah, to distract you. To distract. Okay. So we add 4 to both sides. 5x equals 20, but that has nothing to do with this 20. Divide by 5x equals 4. Pretty straightforward. How about here? Oh, now we're given two sides the same which means the opposite angles have to be the same, right? Now, a couple different ways we can go about this. But what most people are going to say is, well, since those two angles are the same, this angle is going to be what? 3x minus 6. And now I could say 30 plus 3x minus 6 plus 3x minus 6 equals 180. 180. So that is 30 minus 6 is 24, minus 6 is 18, plus 6x equals 180. Subtract the 18. 6x equals 162. So x equals 27. Well, I know 6 times tw 2 is 12, 6 times 20 is 120, leaving a 42, and 6 times 7 is 42. And I'm a math teacher, and I've been doing this for about 30 years, about 28 years, so, yeah. Twice as long as you've been alive, I've been doing this. So, to count back through my college years and my high school years, I've been doing this kind of math since I was... Well, 36 years, probably. 36 years. Yeah. Because I don't teach math. I teach students. And my students change every year. Oh, I wake up every day and say, not today. But I still get up and do it anyway. Okay. That's pretty much the way it goes. All right, another way some people will do this one, okay? What some people will do with this one is they'll say, okay, wait a minute, I know these two angles have to be the same and I use 30 up here. So that means I have 150 left, right? And I know I have to divide that equally between these two angles, so that must mean this is 75 and this is 75. And then they do this equation. So 3x equals 81, so x equals 27. Okay, so that's a different way of handling that problem. Both ways obviously give me exactly the same answer, so they're equally as valid. Okay, so it's kind of up to you to decide which way you, this gives us the easier equation, but it requires some more mental computation. This way is more direct. And no proofs until now. No, it's not time to cry. Now, on 
the test. This type of proof is going to be given to you in a way that we haven't really done it before, but you'll probably like it's a fill-in-the-blank proof. Where half, right. the, half of it's already filled out for you, and you just have to fill out the rest. So let me kind of set this up. It's going to say statement one. Uh, so this should say a segment bar up here. Okay. PQ congruent to TQ, statement two, PS parallel to RT. And three. Okay. Oh, I skipped something. Sorry. No, it's okay. We. Uh, I want to move the vertical angles are congruent thing down here to four. So, come here. Four, come up here to three. Just erase that. Make that three. That four. Sorry, right on the fly. Okay. And make this. Triangle SPQ congruent to triangle RTQ. Okay, so fill in the blanks. You don't need to, it's it's kind of laid out for you a little more directly. You need to fill in the blanks. Uh, what's reason number one? Given. What's reason number two? Given. We're gonna mark this on our picture, right? We're also gonna mark these lines are parallel. Now, parallel lines, what do parallel lines give us? What do we look for when we see parallel lines? We look for congruent what? Um, angles. Parallel lines will give us congruent angles. <coughs> How do we look for those angles? What letter are we looking for? Z. Okay. Now, where would you like your Z to be? There's a couple different places I could put it. Uh, P and T. Okay, like that. Yeah. Okay. So, I could say, therefore, now that angle P is congruent to angle T, right? And I can use just one letter because there are no multiple angles there, I'm, so I can shortcut a little bit, right? I could call them SPQ and QTR as well. That wouldn't be incorrect. I, can I ever use two letters to name an angle? No. Okay, one or three. Um, and what's my reason? Alternate interior angles, name the pair. Technically theorem, but if you left the word out theorem, it'd be okay. Next one says vertical angles are congruent. Oh gosh, what am I looking for then? Where would those vertical angles be? Angle PQS congruent to angle TQR. Oh, and what do we have now? What shortcut are we using? No, we are not using side, angle, side. Angle, side, angle. Why is it not side, angle, side? Because parallel is not the same as congruent. These sides are parallel, but that does not mean we know they're congruent yet. If I wanted to prove they're congruent, I could take another step, step six, and say PS is congruent to RT now. What would be my reason? What do we use right after congruent triangles? Ooh, the silence is bothering me. C, P, C, T, C, I heard it. So if I wanted to go on further, like if this said, instead of SPQ congruent triangle, if it said prove uh, PS congruent to RT, then we'd need another step. And that would be C, P, C, T, C. Because remember, we use this after congruent triangles to show other pairs of corresponding parts that we didn't know about to this point. Now we must know our congruent because they're parts of corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Okay? But again, fill in the blank. Style. Not horrible. Next, we get a coordinate proof. And it's asking you in this one to prove that two triangles are congruent. 
Now, these are just like two random triangles. They are not vertical, horizontal, or anything like that. So what am I going to have to do to prove they're congruent? Distance formula. Now, be careful. We aren't going to do A, B, and then B, C, and then C, D, and then D, E, and then E, F, and then F, A. No, these are two triangles, A, B, C, and D, E, F. So it's A, B, B, C, and C, A, and then D, E, E, F, and F, D that we look for. And for each one of these, you would just set up a distance formula. Pick the one you want me to do. Uh, A, B. Yeah. A, B, okay. So... Set up my template. My x's are 3 and 6. My y's are 7 and 11. 3 minus 6 is negative 3 squared. 7 minus 11 is negative 4 squared. So that's 9 plus 16, which is square root of 25. So that's 5. Okay? That would have to correspond to what? DE, according to my statement, right? Because that's ABC to DEF. So it has to be in that order. So DE better also be 5 when I put those numbers in. If it's not, I've proven they're not congruent. Which actually is kind of nice because it saves me time. But they're probably going to be. So DE is 2 and 5. And negative 4 and negative 8. Minus negative becomes plus a positive. That's negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. Square root of 9 plus 16. Aha, that's going to be 5 also. Aha, those two are congruent. And now we do the same thing for BC and EF and the same thing for CA and DF. They are congruent. They should be. I did the You're ahead of me then. Okay. Distance formula. You have to know distance formula. I'm not going to tell you. If you come and say, I forgot this formula, I don't know what it is, I'm going to say, sucks to be you. That's the amount of sympathy I'm going to have. Okay? Behold the garden where I grow the sympathy I have for you, the non existent garden. Okay. Do we only have to know distance for For showing length, yeah. And, just, and for the test, it'll pretty much be the one you need to know. One last one on the back. It's another proof. Given BC bisects angle AC, ABC, and ACB, prove those triangles are congruent. Right. That's the magic word. This is all on your own. But BC bisects angle ABC and angle ACB. That's given, obviously. Do not miss the given. Magic word here is bisects. So we're going to use definition of what? Bisects. To make conclusions about congruent parts. What is being bisected? And those things are segments, angles, triangles. What are they? Angles. If I cut two angles in half, I'm going to get congruent. Angles. If I cut a banana and a half, I'm going to get two bananas. What? Yeah. Well, or half, two banana halves, right? I'm not getting oranges or kumquats or star fruit. It would be cool if you cut a banana in half and got a star fruit. That would actually be kind of cool. Okay. So what are my congruent angle pairs because of that statement? Are the A, C, and C, D angles? Uh, I don't know. No. What's the question? There's a reason I'm in this class. I'm not a David. Okay. B, C, let's do the first choice. B, C, bisects angle A, B, C. Where's angle A, B, C? Right there. What's being bisected? That. Where are my congruent angles? Angle ABC, DBC, okay, so that's a congruent angle pair, and we would also bisect angle ACB, I'm sure it's ACD, 
sorry. Typo. So now where are my congruent angles? Amy, angle ACB congruent to angle DCB. Both by definition of bisects, you do it as two steps or as one step because it's using the same reason for both. All right, so I've got two pairs of congruent parts, two angles. I'm going to need a side somewhere. Where is it? CB is congruent to CB. Why? Reflexive. Do I have congruent triangles? Yes, I do. What are they called? ABC and DBC. And what reason did I use? What shortcut? Angle side angle. This is the level of difficulty of the proofs on the test. They are not the super hard problems, are they? Okay. So this is definitely available for you to study from. You also have um, at the end of the chapter in the book, there's a practice test. At the end of the chapter in the book, there's also all sorts of review problems. Those would be great things to be working on as you study tonight. Tomorrow when you come into class, make sure you have any homework that was missing that you have finished out and ready for me to check off right away. So I can add that to your scores for your sheets. Have your sheets out and any missing homework needs to be out. Just sit down, folks. Right, we got a couple minutes still. Relax. So make sure that stuff is sitting out. Yes, I know this has been a long podcast if you're listening to it, but that's because I'm recording it live in class. It always takes longer, um, but it's a good review of everything that we've done. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Okay. What should my closing thing be? So long and see you at the test tomorrow.